Although my commute out to Richmond to the Grey's office was objectively very nice, compared to the tube anyway, the trains that I got weren't very frequent. While there were regular trains to Richmond, most of them were really slow and stopped at a lot of places, and the ones that I wanted to get that made the journey time reasonable were only every half hour. Now this was always fine, but I found it very frustrating when I just missed the train that I wanted. I could be 30 seconds late to the train station, just miss the train that I want, then suddenly it takes me 20 minutes longer to get home, and, and that's like 20 minutes gone from my evening, just because I was very slightly late. And, and the effect this had was it made me very anxious around 8am and 6pm when I was getting ready to leave for the trains. I'd be constantly looking at my watch, making sure it was planned so I could leave at the perfect time. All of those fears have gone, um, now that I'm getting the tube. Because there's a tube every two minutes and they all take the same length of time. I need to make sure, however, that this isn't a slippery slope to leaving really late. Now that I don't have the deadline of the train to meet. Another change to get used to is that I now have to have breakfast at home. Grey's provided breakfast in the office and I got so used to having it at about quarter past nine. This feels very early. It's already 8.46, which is nearly 20 minutes later than I wanted to leave. Damn it, the Victoria line is suspended. Um, I'm gonna have to go a different way. So remember I said I have to change, I can cycle to the place where I change and just skip the first tube. And it's actually faster to do this. But the reason why I don't is because I, I change at Stockwell and that station is in zone two instead of zone one. And it's therefore more expensive to start a journey there, which is stupid because I'm traveling less and I'm on one tube instead of two but it costs 50 pence more. I can, of course, use Boris bikes to get there. Or rather, Santander cycles. These things come in so useful. It's cold today though. Winter is definitely on its way. Oh, it's busy here. Right, I'm finally here. Right now there's a new member orientation for this new work. I don't know where it is though. Alright, I know a bit more about the building now, where I'm working. That was useful. This has felt like a really long day, but it is half past six and it's time to leave. But I'm not going home. Oh, it's wet out here. I'm going to the cinema with Roger. We're going to see it. We're going to a cinema, which is just next to Angel Station, which is like a 10, 15 minute cycle. It, it is quite nice being in central London after work for these things. <laughs> and again, borrow Spike to the rescue. City Mapper has a terrible habit of sending you up one-way streets the wrong way and telling you to turn a particular way at a, a junction which the signs tell you you're not supposed to. So that journey was slightly more difficult than anticipated, but I'm here. We're going to try to quickly get something to eat before we go and see the film. I need to find Roger first though. The film actually starts in two minutes. We've just got our McDonald's. That was a very fast McDonald's. Um, what, like two minutes, four minutes? Cinema time. So like I said, so like I said, we're going to see it. And I've never actually seen any kind of horror film in a cinema before. I'll give you the review when we come out. Thank you. Well, that was a an interesting film. If you don't want any spoilers, maybe skip the next 30 seconds. What did you think? I thought it was just overhyped and not actually that scary. But I thought it was quite good. I thought it was very scary. I was very scared. 
it was very stereotypical why are you walking into the danger and not going to the police kind of situation right we're gonna go home now I'm gonna to try to calm down this is why Thames water undertakes major utility work Not too bad for me. Has it got any yolk? Oh yes, perfect. It is finally Saturday, which I'm glad about because it's been quite a tiring week. I was out last night for a friend's birthday. I feel okay today, I'm not hungover, which is good because today is an important day. Remember a couple of months ago, I was buying tickets to go and ride the mail rail. That is today. Today I'm going on the mail rail. I think it starts at the Postal Museum. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna leave now and, and head over that way. The London Post Office Railway, known as Mail Rail, is basically a, like a, a, a tube line. It's underground. Uh, it's very small because it's not for transporting people, it's for transporting mail, post, letters. And it was used between 1927 and 2003, I believe, to, to take posts between the different sorting offices around London. But unfortunately it closed in 2003 and was replaced by vans on the roads because that was cheaper. Which is a shame, but what they've done now is open it up to the public. There have been really dramatic adverts for the mail rail around London over the last couple of months. Adverts on the tube that say, secret, abandoned, forgotten. It was none of these things. It was perhaps not very well known and disused. But regardless, I am very excited to ride on it. I'm doing this with Roger, who is a little bit hungover today. Well, there's a post office here, but I think the museum is just a bit further down the street. So the museum is where the, the journey starts and that's because it's at the, the Mount Pleasant sorting office which is this huge thing here I think anyway not a hundred percent sure that city mapper is taking us to the right place the signs are just pointing to customer inquiries for the sorting office I think this is it right we made it we're in time So this looks like the train. It's so tiny. And it goes down into a tunnel there. Now the, the, the tunnels are much smaller than a tube tunnel and they have two tracks in. The, like the trains go both ways in one tunnel. to Mail Rail. You're about to explore some of London's hidden underground postal railway. I'm Andy, your guide today, and I'm joined by Ray Middlesworth. Hi, Ray. Hi. I worked here as an engineer for 27 years, keeping the trains running. But not just any old trains. This unique narrow-gauge railway was designed to carry mail, not people. So if you're feeling a little cramped, that's why. And although we have a driver today, the original mail trains were driverless. Ray, could you tell us about that? Sandbags on the line. That's called the sand drag. There's a pile of sand on the track designed to stop runaway trains. The platform you're about to see looks much as it did on the day it shut down in 2003. Uh, Ray, can you describe it for us? When Mail Rail was running, this platform would be a hive of activity. You'd see people playing darts between the trains arriving, guys conversing back and forth and wheeling work up and down. It was a noisy and lively place to work. Ah, don't worry everybody. Just a power cut. I hope you've enjoyed your tour of London's hidden postal railway. 
it was unique and I love being part of the great team keeping the railway running. We hope you'll enjoy exploring the rest of the exhibition just as much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Welcome back. If you'd like to collect your belongings, then head out towards the left. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> this is all really interesting stuff in this like, little museum part of it. Roger is enjoying playing dress up here. That's the end of the mail rail ride and museum. But there's a postal museum across the road that we can go to as well. Postal museum stuff is all finished. Um, we're just stopping to get some drinks and snacks. Got a sultana scone, cream and jam, and an iced chocolate. It's just like chocolate. Right? Bye. Thanks. Maybe you shouldn't have had that food because I'm now going for dinner. Um, I'm going to meet my old flatmates actually who I lived with until I moved in with Claudio this year. So the bus I wanted didn't stop. Why do buses keep doing this to me? This one's stopping. Bye. We are going to Oaxaca for dinner which I've never been to before. Not even sure if that's how you pronounce it. Hello. Got a burrito. Dinner is done. Gonna to head to a pub. What is this? A fire exit? Yeah, it's already open. <laughs> It says there, this is our fire exit. It's about 11 o'clock now. I'm gonna get the tube. Nice to see them both. Uh, they've headed home. I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Part of me wants to just stay in bed for most of the day and relax. But I also think I should maybe get out and do something. Make the most of the weekend so it doesn't feel like I've done nothing before I'm back in work again. But I'll figure this out in the morning. Thanks for watching.